Hey everyone, my name is Sean and welcome to Geeks Varna. During our last live stream, we took a look at the Drone Assist app, which included a live walkthrough of how to understand the different types of controlled airspace, as well as how to log your own drone flights on the app for others to see. As this is something which has been requested by a lot of viewers, the following is an edited version of that walkthrough. Enjoy, and if you find some value, please remember to subscribe and hit the like button. The way you get the Drone Assist app, um, this obviously isn't the Drone Assist app. I <laughs> can't um, believe you haven't got rescued the Enchanter already. <laughs> How have you not got that? <laughs> I also haven't got Bubble Witch Saga 3 Saga, which is shocking. And look at these ratings. They're there. free. Look at the look at this, that's, that's free. Why I know. You know. Well, talking about free, we also have here the Drone Assist app. So th that's the one you want, so again, so people can see, because you do, obviously, when you put anything in, you will always get a few different um, um, recommendations come up. The one you want here is this one, the Drone Assist app from Nats. So you obviously click on that and you install it. Um, I've already installed it. So I'm now going to click open. Just, when you boot it up, uh, you'll be asked to sign in and everything else like that. And every time you go into it, you'll be, you'll be asked to either read the full terms, conditions, or, or that you understand. Look at that, I'm straight into a high risk area. Um, <laughs> so I would just boot that app up. It'd be good to ask uh, everyone in the chat how many of you have this installed? Yes. UK base? Put a one in the chat if you have it installed, a two in the chat if you do not. And you're UK based? Yes, and you're UK based, of course. Put a three if you're not in the UK. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and you have it. <laughs> can, I, can I plug an option for the Republic yes, of Ireland? Please. So there's an RAE, which I did, our, all our pilots did there, stuff within the south of Ireland called Fly Right, which is F-L-Y-R-Y-T-E, and they have an airspace map. Yes. And it's that good. When we're applying for airspace approvals in, the, in Ireland, we use their system. So if you Republic of Ireland, if you're looking, use the Fly Right system. So here, here is here is the scene that greets you. This is obviously the scene for people that are looking at London. And then, as you can see, you can move around and look at different various zones. Um, now, this obviously looks a little bit scary when you first when you first sign in. It's just zoomed itself in again, which again is a little bit frustrating. Um, but obviously, all of these things can mean very different things. First of all, you have of course the um, the actual um, um, the FRZs, the, the flight restriction zones, which are around airports, which will look like these these funny little um, um, underground symbols um, with the with the um, the extra mileage pointing out each side which is actually the uh, the runway heading um for these these parts that stick out here runway uh, protection zone for its official yes. term yes thank you uh, andrew is here to get those those official <laughs> official terms out there for me as well and then you will notice on things like heathrow and other areas um that you will then have these much larger areas which you can just see the outskirts of here uh, which are the uh, ctrs the 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 class d um, airspace, which which again will surround it, which which lets you know that you're within the general bubble. Yeah, obviously, just for people who aren't familiar with Heathrow, Heathrow has two runways. So the runway protection zones go five kilometres out from the end of the runway, and they're a kilometre wide. Heathrow's runways are spaced roughly a kilometre apart, therefore yes. it's a double width. Whereas Gatwick, the runways are a lot closer, so it's a lot thinner. And then there's a circle around that, which is either two or two and a half nautical miles radius, and that is defined by the size of the airport and different in the zones. Yes, exactly. And, and there is actually a map on, uh, there's a link on the, the Drone Safe website, which will take you to a, a, a map interface, it's really which good. will actually then overlay onto your Google Maps. So every time you go into your own Google Maps, they're all on there. And it shows you the different FRZs for each for each airport. So that's a re really good point. Thank you, sir. Um, so yeah, so here you can see round Heathrow, you, you have that extra control space. Now, of course, it doesn't mean that you, you can't fly your drone in, in, in all of this area here, of course, um, being Class D, if you are flying a small drone in Category D airspace, you do not need any further permissions. Yeah, but what people need to remember is uh, flights coming in and out of Heathrow have to be controlled by aircraft control, hence why airspace exists yes. and control zones. So that, that is to allow them to maneuver aircraft into Heathrow. Airspace is layered, so it's not from it's, all airspace doesn't work from the ground up. So that level there is a lot higher than ground level, which means you can fly underneath that without having any hassle in terms of their space issues or having to get air traffic control permission. It's when you get close to the airport, as in the runway protection zones and the flight restriction zones, that's when you're going to be in more conflict, and that's why you have to get permission to fly in those areas. Exactly, and, and then when you when you do look at some of the, the areas around airports that have large CTRs, 
uh, category DS based around them, um, then you know it, it, it is off-putting. And I've had a lot of people uh, messaging me uh, with screenshots and saying, um, "This is my area. I can't fly anywhere." Um, and of course, you know, we then explain you need to look at what those different types of airspace are, of course, um, to be able to um, uh, to work out what you're doing. Um, so up, up here on the top left, you've got these these three dots here. Obviously, at the top here, you can see high risk. It will tell you whether it's high risk, moderate risk, and and it will tell you uh, it will go green if you if you just to follow the, the the drone code. But when you open this, you can actually set things um, and you can turn off and turn on different types of airspace. Um, I always have the upper airspace turned off uh, because obviously that's, that's completely irrelevant to me. Uh, but CTRs, I, I, I like to know that see, if I am within a CTR and that type of thing, I think it's important. Um, the other thing to stress very quickly as well is, of course, that you, you do need to be careful from the point of view of just keep still keeping an eye out for manned aviation because you can have different reasons like emergency service helicopters, that type of thing coming into your airspace. Um, so do do still keep Obviously it London out. has the heli route as well. Yes, London has the heli route, exactly. So you, you, you do need to be still aware of these, these types of things, which is very important. Um, now, the next one I would like to show on here, which is actually, you do see a few of these dotted around is the little blue symbols we'll come back to the yellow ones in a second but you can see these little blue symbols here and this is if you click on it it will bring up the by the way uh, when you're using Assist, if you click on anything it brings up an explanation to tell you what it is and if if you can fly there and that type of thing and as you can see here let me just get rid of my camera off the top of that for a second nope that's the wrong one short there we go you can, you can just see Andrew now. Um, you, you can see here that this is actually somebody has put up their own um, um, airspace warning, essentially, UAS operator, um, and they've given advance warning of what they're going to be doing um, and that type of thing. It says surface to 830, so I presume they've actually that's actually covered under a NOTAM, I would say, being the fact that that's, that's quite a lot of airspace. So, yes. I think so, it's if it's... Yeah, but some of them are some will come up. I think is yellow for no times as well. Yes, exactly. So, so again, it's it's worth even though you you get the colours because this app hasn't been over updated, shall we say? <laughs> um, so some things do come up as differing things, and you, you may normally expect that to come up as yellow, but it's good that it's there. Uh, uh, full stop. Anything that comes up in the area that you're flying in, you should look at. Um, and there, you can see this blue one here is telling people that a telecommunication survey is going to be taking place. And I know this one over in Dartford's actually um, under slung load operations which again is um, um, informing everything of, 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 of what's going to be happening there and where to stay away from. So there's, there's, there's some good information there when you do click into each of the sections. The yellow ones it would also give you a, a, some, some NOTAM notifications through this as well. The US UAS geographical zones will come up on this as well. Um, and th this, this basically will tell you whether or not you have those sponsored areas where you need to get permission to fly within all the way through to the fact of there just being something in that area, which is what this one is. It's the Thurrock in, um, um, Airport increased risk area. Um, so it's worth what, looking at all of them, no matter what the colours are, and just, just taking seriously what they say. Um, the, as far as all NOTAMs, as far as you're aware, do all NOTAMs actually show up on, on Drone Assist? I've never seen one that doesn't. Yeah, same. I mean, they, it's a relatively I think automated it's, process. I think it's possible them... for them not to, isn't it? But but um, you know, because I always say have Skywise I mean, subscribed. Just remember, well. the new times will not sh the new times will only show up when they're valid, or sometimes I, I can't remember what the settings in the, on uh, uh, drone assist is for how long in advance. Yes. Some websites you can see sort of seven days ahead for no times, but That's it right. may you know, don't rely on this in terms of doing flight planning on one day and then it not being different on the next day. Yes, because yes. like we have put same day emergency no times out before and things, so it can change very quickly. So it, it's not just a sort of one and done. You do need to check this a lot. Exactly, and then when you zoom in, you can see that it starts to bring up uh, ground hazards, which you need to be aware of. Things like rail lines. Uh, petrol stations, hospitals, wind turbines, that, that type of thing, which is obviously uh, very useful. One of the things I like about this as well, which is something that I personally do, uh, up on the top right here, you can click and then you can actually indicate that you're going to be carrying out a flight. Um, and then you can click on there and you get your own little blue circle. Um, and then you'll, you'll basically, once you're, once you're happy with where it is on the map, so let's say I want to fly over this children's trust school. No, I won't do that. Um, We'll say, even for the video's sake, here we go. Nice, nice bit of green space there, which I have no idea because, um, of course, they still have to carry out in-person ground checks. Uh, you click the tick, and then you can put your your title in here. You can say that it's either now or later. Um, so if, if you were to, to click later, you can put a date and time in there. And you can put a public title and a description in there. Personally, I normally put in there hobbyist flying a Mavic Air 2. 
Um, and I, I actually, I personally put my mobile telephone number in there. I don't have an issue with that being in there. Um, because again, if anybody is seeing it, they, they do have a way of contacting us. The annoying, th the annoying thing for us is you can't like schedule lots in advance. You can like schedule one flight, but then you can't overlay another flight and things. It's only basically one yeah, at a time. Yeah, doesn't help you, does um, it, with the flight so, you We're do. typically saying 12 hours. The one thing people <laughs> I would recommend you do is, there are some people in this community who just want some friends. Obviously, like Sean, yeah. who's putting his phone number out for everyone to see. Yeah, <laughs> everyone, but, everyone, call me. If, I tell you what, if you find a no time with my telephone number on it, text me. Um, just yeah, text text every drone no time in the UK until you find Sean's number. Uh, <laughs> Is this Sean? Is this Sean? I, I always put Geeks of Honor in the title though. So, but the, the thing I would say is. If you're doing a commercial, if you're flying recreation, you want to speak, that's fine. But if you're doing a commercial job, what we normally do is we make sure that circle covers where we're flying, but it may not be the center of that circle, may not be where we are. Yes, because that's there's right. some things we're doing we don't want disturbed. And the yes. problem with this is if you put a crosshair across that circle, that's typically where the pilot is. Exactly. And, and so it, it does, there's a little. A good tip. Really Thank you. No, it's a good tip. Thank you. Um, as, as you can see, we've come back to the, the, the drone assist um, screen and there is now a red circle showing um, that the flight is happening because, of course, I've marked it as a flight more happening. More purple than red? Uh, happening now. Yeah, it that's, is actually, That's, isn't that's it? like magenta purple for it's me. Like, but I'm wondering if the lights of my studio is actually affecting it on my software a little bit. <laughs> Uh, hey, one for red, two for red. magenta. Yeah, that's right. Um, and also, of course, it says caution here now. So now if somebody else looks to, to fly in that zone, they will see your flight, um, which is obviously extremely helpful from a from a uh, safety point of view. Oh, you're still here. I tell you what, while you're here, I'll, I'll tell you a joke, shall I? So I encountered a video on YouTube that said how to stop procrastinating. I thought, how handy is that? So I saved it for later. Boom, boom, See you next time.